Betsy and Thomas here for the American Intelligence Media. Thomas, it's been a few days, well, about a week since the shootings in Las Vegas. When it started, I asked you to uh, give me some input and, and drill down on these shootings, you know, beyond the false flag narrative as to who is behind all of this. So here you are, you have the answer, and you're ready to share it with our audience. Well, Betsy, as I said, and this is my personal opinion, not the opinion of the other members of the conclave, the first thing I said to you is, well, is the Mandalay going bust? Is it bankrupt? Is it in some kind of economic trouble? Because, of course, its stocks will go into the basement the next day, and anyone who would have known about that in advance would have made a ton of money off of that. Not only that, if they were in trouble, just like people forget that the trade towers had been basically um, condemned because of the asbestos and they were given only a few years to figure out a solution. There was no solution. So I thought, oh, of course, the Mandalay Bay must be in some kind of trouble. So we look back and we now see the evidence that in June, July, August, and September, particularly in September, it seems like all the members of the board of MGM Resort International, uh, Sheldon Adelson uh, and uh, others, but particularly him, the CEO chairman, they sold their stock. And they sold their stock at a very high rate that is going in the stock market now. And then, of course, their stock tumbled. So if they bought short and if they spent that money doing such, which is also, I'm sure, the case, they made millions and millions and millions of dollars. So who would have pulled that off? Now, here's the problem. Most people think, well, matter of fact, we see one particular person who works with Alex Jones and in Infowars who's gone crazy and basically turned on Trump because he says Trump conducted this false flag. Well, first off, we don't really have many facts about Las Vegas and the facts that we have lead in all different directions. So we can discuss lots of those, but we need to be very careful about that and not jump to any conclusions. But one thing we can jump to is some very simple conclusions based upon a rational uh, deduction. And that is that Mandalay Bay Hotel security had to be in on this. And we have basically created a scenario that shows what probably um, happened or might have happened or would be the likeliest scenario of happening. But then our opinion on this is very, it's very stringent because I say, and the conclave says, please show us a picture of a bullet wound going in or out of a human body. Excuse me to have to say such a blunt and coarse thing, but please show me any evidence there of that would demonstrate that there was a shooting of the nature that was given out by the mainstream media. So we can go into all the complicated facts, but the reality is very, very simple. Mandalay Bay, and a dozen, 11 other major resorts in Las Vegas are owned by MGM Resort International. CEO chairman is a friend of Donald Trump's who tried, remember, tried to force his way into Trump's campaign, tried to give him money when Trump said, I don't want any money, tried to force money on him. And as soon as Trump opened the gates to allow money to come, he gave him a blank check, whatever you want. So then one would assume then Trump was in on this. How could this happen? Well, it's because 50% of the MGM Resort International is owned by Dubai World, by a company in the United Arab Emirates. Now that's very important. We're going to come back to that in just a minute. Then why would the owners of MGM International Resorts want to crash Vegas and cause people not to come there to be terrified of Vegas and to go through all of this because of this occurrence. We'll just call it an occurrence. Why would that happen? Because why? They're making a fortune off the stock market. Not only that, if Dubai World believes it and they sell out, <laughs> then the stock market prices go down even further. And then once there is a, cro a crash in the stock market, which is bound to happen very soon, then they could clean up. They could clean up. They could buy, you know, for a penny uh, a stock instead of $35. But we see already a crash in their stock uh, prices. So Dubai World, hmm, isn't that funny? Because isn't that where Stephen Paddock's hostess girlfriend just had her picture taken in Dubai? 
well, who was taking the picture? And why was she in Dubai? And we have to ask some very deep questions. And when we do, it's all going to lead back to the following idea. Either the United States did it in complete compliance, or not compliance, in complete agreement with the FBI, with basically the, the Sheriff's Department of Clark County, with the Las Vegas Police Department, with the dispatch broadcasts that were given out, and basically, and then the services that showed up to provide emergency services thereafter, which we have pointed out in our pictures and videos as we've looked at pictures and videos, how scant that was. And in fact, the the pictures demonstrate that it was not what it was said to be. So I would just say that we have uh, several posts on our website that will point all, all those pictures out uh, that you just described, okay? Yes. Now, <clears throat> the question is, who could Trump Trump right now in a false flag? Let's call it a false flag. Who knows whether people were shot or not? I'm still waiting. I, I, I have no opinion yet. My um, opinion is uh, still out and it's being reserved until I see what some people claim they have seen, which is definitive footage that shows people shot. I have not seen that. I've seen one handheld video uh, uh, photographer who acted like he was some kind of medical person. That was completely fake. In case any of you haven't seen that, that's also on uh, Truth News Headlines, Aim for Truth. Was that tonight or last night, that scene? What? I can't remember. When the picture of the video of the guy who went around trying to well, it, tell everybody what to do and how to Just because it might have been posted tonight doesn't mean that it was taken tonight. So, I don't know, your question is... Oh, it clear. would also be on the long list of everything yes. you have about Las Vegas. That's what I'm saying. I have two okay. posts at aimfortruth.org with everything that you're describing right there so readers can go to it. So you need to just proceed on because what is important here, the question that I ask you to really get us going today is, okay, the Las Vegas Police Department and Fire Department is not noticed in any of the pictures that we presented. There's, a, there's no official insignia on any of the vehicles or any of their jackets or anything. And then even when you look and see how sloppily the FBI seems to be carrying out their investigation, even with crime scene tape that doesn't even say FBI or any, again, no official insignia on it, you go, okay, who could tell the police and the FBI to stand down to let this operation happen? And then that's when you started telling me about a very interesting person behind the scenes that I think that our listeners need to know about. What I'm about to tell you could get us in a great deal of trouble, so I have to be very careful about the way that I say this, because essentially what I'm going to tell you is who is behind all the false flags since 2012 and before, who was at least complicit with them. And this is a person who runs the National Counterterrorism Center. His name is... Nicholas Rasmussen. He has he was President Obama's chief counterterrorist person who worked with uh, is it Leslie Ireland to give Obama a report each day. You must remember the following if you're to understand what I'm about to tell you. Always before the CIA was trumped by counterintelligence of CIA. In other words, when they're running when black ops of CIA is running a black ops and somebody comes in and tells them to stand down, that's because there's a black ops inside of a black ops. That is called counterintelligence. Or they now call it and try to confuse you by calling it counterterrorism. No, it's counterintelligence. And for instance, the investigation into Trump, Trump fake intelligence and the Trump dossier is a counterintelligence investigation conducted by Robert Mueller counterintelligence, okay? Remember that. The 17 intelligence agencies must stand down when Nicholas Rasmussen or his people below him tell them to. Now, um, I don't want to uh, get you sidetracked, but for a lot of listeners, it might be interesting to note that if you watched Homeland, that series Homeland, there's a character, it's Dara Dahl, isn't it? Yes. And and so then you can have in your mind's eye just who this Rasmussen guy is. Yes, he. I believe <clears throat> it's very possible that they actually created that character based upon Nicholas Rasmussen. Now remember, Dubai World is where? 
in the United Arab Emirates. Who did Rasmussen serve in his, he, he is what you'd call the classic bureaucrat that tells presidents what to do. He told Obama what to do. If he lied to Obama and told them something different than the counterintelligence community was doing, and by the way, he can't tell the president all that they're doing unless the president has a need to know. So unless the president has written an executive order or in some way has need to know, then Rasmussen, Nicholas Rasmussen, didn't have to tell the president what he was up to. Now, he was involved in the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. He was involved in the policies of North Korea that led us to this dilemma today. When we actually gave them their nuclear program, that was him. Uh, th that's counterintelligence. Intelligence. And it's the highest level. It, it trumps the CIA. That office, when George Bush, baby Bush, uh, after 9-1-1 with the Patriot Act, changed everything over to counterterrorism and said there was a war. There was a war on. Homeland Security was put in place. And later, um, after Ridge, came, of course, Chertoff, the man who's going to make all the money for putting in the new devices in Las Vegas because of this terrible attack. Supposedly. Which is just another layer of motive for the false flags. I mean, there's so many layers of, of organizations, people, and entities that benefit from all these false flags. Nicholas Rasmussen worked for Chertoff. Okay, he was in Homeland Security. Okay. He was one of the principal people who came over from uh, counterintelligence into Homeland Security so that then he became one of the most, well, most powerful people in Homeland Security, but now he is the most powerful person in America. Let's just put it that way. The reason that that is so is because the 17 intelligence community, com, com, uh, community all, all those agencies, all take their order from one man, and that is the uh, director of the Office of National Intelligence. These offices were all made up since the 70s by the White House to turn American intelligence into corporate intelligence that is based upon giving all of our secrets to the international corporations that conduct war on both sides of the line. That's what's going on. So Dubai has just been found out, the United Arab Emirates, along with Qatar, Saudi Arabia, to be major funders of what? Terrorism. They're terrorists, folks. You couldn't get any better person to do this with, but I believe that it's very possible that the owners of the MGM Resort International knew this was coming, and then they did these bets upon the stock market so that they'd have personal gain. But more than that, because they know that a stock market crash is coming, because they have the inside track, and it also is going to then crash Dubai's investment. And basically, you're going to see MGM Resorts International in a few years walking away with the whole pie. But that's not what happened. What happened was not known to Trump. It was not known to the FBI. When they say the FBI came in and took over the the um, investigation, just as you pointed out, well, then where was the FBI? They had one representative there. He is told what to do by the National Counterterrorism Center, by Nicholas Rasmussen. That's his boss. So if anybody is telling him what to do and giving them the fake information, and it's coming from the, the NCTC. And then they're telling the locals, the authorities, what to do. Yes. And you'll notice that, as you said, the policemen who are waiting in the well of the Mandalay Hotel for God knows how long. I mean, the dispatch says quite a while, but we the dispatch could be fake. Who knows? But when the first, well, we just saw today <laughs> the most ridiculous articles come out that state that the police now say that a Mandalay Bay security guard was shot in the leg because he came, he was seen on Stephen Paddock's camera that was set up in the hallway and the security guard came up to that same floor coincidentally because someone left the door open and when Stephen Paddock saw him, he shot through the door which is amazing because there's no holes in the door, but that's what it says. Shot through the door, 200 rounds. And nobody heard it. And shot this man <laughs> once in the leg, Jesus Campo. But now, wait a second. The report said he died. So if he was shot in the leg and he died, well, we don't know because there's conflicting reports. But supposedly, 
The first 200 rounds were shot at a security guard coming up to check on a room. Now, they have security that tells them when a room door is ajar, but they don't have cameras that show that a camera was set up outside of a room or that 200 rounds were fired in the Mandalay. Do you know they, that an oh HVA Lord. system can catch those noises and it would be resounding throughout the whole building? <laughs> The entire hotel would have emptied because they would have thought they were in a war zone. Yeah, yes. But now, that's not what happened. There's only three people who ran out down the escalator and into the Excalibur, I believe. The, uh, the wrong, uh, running down the escalator, that was three Mandalay Bay security guards in uniform. One, the two seemed to be chasing the first one. Well, that's pretty strange, seeing that one was shot up on the 32nd floor, and that who carried the guns up there, and that, you know, I could go on and on with the incongruencies. But the point is, is that the National Counterterrorism Center is directly linked to the bro uh, uh, Board of Broadcasting Governors, which is a Department of Defense unit that controls and monitors every broadcast in America and throughout the world. And then they manipulate it. And they watch it now because they created a global engagement center in that very office. And the global engagement center is, oh, that's right, run by the National Counterterrorism Center. But wait a minute, didn't, weren't there some people that resigned from this center recently? The heads of it resigned recently and said about three or four weeks ago that after they resigned, they made a public statement in a lecture that they gave that was public where they said that one of the things that they did was to go into Facebook and they had the ability to plug in any type of profile that they wanted let's say, Islamic terrorist who happens to like guns, who has purchased, uh, who has uh, clicked on these type of things, who has clicked on these type of things, who, and who has created a profile that looks like this. Okay? They could literally target someone out of their imagination, click a button, and have everyone's Facebook there, and they could then go and monitor that Facebook and then put fake ads on the Facebook, these are the fake ads that Zuckerberg recently came out and said $100,000 from 470 accounts were used to create fake Russian ads that tried to convince people to vote against Hillary Clinton and vote for uh, Trump. Of course, when you look at the ads, that's not what they are at all. And that he came out to cover up for the fact that the head of the Global Engagement Center had come out and publicly said that. Within a few days, Zuckerberg came out and just released that he magically found $100,000 worth of Russian accounts in his multi-billion dollar advertisement uh, Excel spreadsheet. He just happened to find these 470 accounts. But anyway, we all know that the CIA runs it. Well, this was an admitting of it and that the NCTC, the National Counterterrorism Center, ran by Nicholas Rasmussen, is in charge of the Global Engagement Center that is in charge of the Board of Broadcasting Governors that, gov that governs every single telephone call you're on, everything you type in your computer that is wireless, and, or, and, or and, anything that goes and, over any wires, what am I saying? And anything. From, and from our recent articles, is that they're, they, they're running all the propaganda operations. Well, that's what he quit for. Uh -huh. And then his three major people at the Global Engagement Center and the head, because the other head had already quit, they quit. Now, why did they quit? Because they knew in advance, too, with the insider information that Sheldon Adelson had and MGM Resort International board members had that something was going to go down that was very negative. And so not only did they quit, but they were basically whistleblowers if you hear what their boss, the head of that center, had to say once he left. And the other three said they left because the whole thing was a complete joke and they didn't want to be any res be responsible for what was about to happen. What did they mean by they did not want to be? Well, because there should have been across the NSA, which also comes through the Broadcasting Board of uh, of governors, they have everything the NSA gathers on every single 
fiber optic or, or Atlantic cable, Pacific, every single thing that comes over the internet or is widely broadcast or broadcast on the radio all goes through the center. Okay? So they have the ability, just like we got through re reading about these companies that are that uh, Google Venture have bought into called, um, uh, what was it? Uh, re uh, Reader of the are Future? You think, no, Recorder, Record Future. Record, record, Recorder Future. Recorder Future. They analyze the flow of information, including your telephone calls, folks, and they analyze the words for how often they come up in what context and they can predict the future based upon who's saying what. Because they don't stop the Islamic terrorists, they don't stop the KKK, they don't stop anybody on the internet. They run the, 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 the Tor dark web Oh, what Tor gets into it, but they run the dark web pornography that's coming out now, and now they're admitting it, and they're being lawsuits are being brought against the CIA and the NSA that ran the largest porno, uh, child, child pornography uh, websites so that they could uh, entrap people. And of course, it, you would know all this if you follow truth news headlines, because Thomas, you're actually going through all the headlines that have been posted over the last few weeks. But what you're doing is you're now telling us what all of these headlines mean. Counter intelligence, counter terrorism. According to the Patriot Act, now called the U.S. Uh, Freedom Act, which of course both of those are a lie in their own name, they're an oxymoron, that's the opposite of what they are. They clearly call every American a terrorist until proven otherwise. So you have counterterrorism being used against you with every Google search that you use, every Yahoo search. It doesn't matter. You think you're going into the dark web? Who do you think monitors the dark web? You must be kidding, folks. If you think you have a black phone that is, that is encrypted so that the NSA can't get it, that is an absolute joke. Listen to what John McAfee, the guy who owns the largest antivirus company in the world, he says every single communication is monitored. You cannot encrypt it. Forget about it. So they would have known in that center that Las Vegas was about to happen. And I suggest that's the reason they quit. And that's what they meant when they said they didn't want to be part of this circus and with what was about to happen. I want to go and I want to go back to Dubai and Dubai's connection. I don't know that we flushed that out all the way. Is Dubai hurting because of the collapse of the petrodollar and all that's going on over there with and the falling stock market and they have all these properties and wealth in Vegas and this was a way to recoup some of those losses? I'm not sure that I, I understood what you were saying there. Well, the, the majority of what you just said, Betsy, is absolutely right. Saudi Arabia had the first shortfalls because of the uh, petrodollar crashing years ago where they started to have, you know, $100 billion annual shortfalls uh, in a company that produces the second most oil in the world because they had banked on America. So they sold their, they sold their uh, bonds. And when they sold billions and billions and billions of bonds, that still didn't help them. So then we had to sell them weapons so we could get back that money that the Fed had to print $4.5 trillion to buy those bonds along with the Chinese bonds. And so, yes, Qatar, United Arab uh, Emirates, um, Bahrain, um, and two or three other countries uh, are all hurting they're all hurting tremendously, and Qatar is hurting tremendously, and so does Saudi Arabia, because Trump went over there and said, I'm not going to work with any more dadgum terrorists, and they started pointing fingers, saying, well, but you fund the terrorists. No, you fund the terrorists. No, you fund the terrorists. They all fund the terrorists. Every single Muslim company, country, if it is a theocracy like Iran, like Iraq, like Syria, like uh, Jordan, like uh, on, on and on and on, they fund one side, either Sunni or Shiite, period. And anyone who thinks otherwise is just silly. They just haven't looked at the way the money is flown, the oil money is flown. So yes, they're all hurting. So is Dubai hurting? Yes, it's hurting. They're even having real estate problems. They're having to sell some of these big buildings and they're finding that they can't even maintain some of these big buildings because nobody's going there because it was built only for millionaires. You have to be filthy rich just to, just to be there for a minute and yet, hmm, Stephen Paddock's girlfriend just went there and took pictures in Dubai. Isn't that interesting? I wonder if Stephen was with him and if he got some of his instructions 
from Dubai. And yes, gun running. I have no doubt there was gun running of some sort, either to Antifa, Black Lives Matter, ISIS, somebody, it doesn't matter. But they left all kinds of confusing, chaotic information in the room. There's the wrong cell phone cord to his cell phone. There's the fact that there aren't enough shells to be the shells that were counted by what was heard. But does it really matter who did it now at this point? Because it's just all lies. Yes, and because mess. it was not Trump. Now, how could it happen that Nicholas Rasmussen is more powerful than Trump? Well, that's what my next question was. Because when we watched Homeland and Dara Dahl, I kept saying, who is his boss and how did he get in that position? Dara Dahl ran counterintelligence. He was the MCTC. They never named it by name or by acronym, but well, that's who he was. Uh -huh. He was but how the did boss. He, get there? he was appointed. He was the boss of the head of the CIA. And you're going, well, wait a second. And then they show the CIA telling the NSA what to do, and you're going, but wait, how is there a boss of the CIA and counterintelligence? How is that possible? It's more than possible. In the show, it actually shows Dara Dahl, the guy who represented the National Counterterrorism, which we are saying is Nicholas Rasmussen at this moment. He literally sat with the new president-elect, and after the president-elect had just made sure that the head of the CIA, who was in head, head of counterintelligence, was like kicked out and like almost locked up, Dara Dahl yells at her, I know better how to run America than you do. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And you have no control over me. And that's the truth, folks. There was with counter uh, counterterrorism, counterintelligence set up by the Homeland Security was equal to Nazi SS. No one stops them. They don't even answer to President Bush. They send somebody over who's a who's an underling to make a report of what they discuss in their committee. But that isn't what happens in their private rooms and their private funded black ops that come through a different fund, not the normal budget that we have, but a completely different fund. And that's where the $9.5 trillion that the Pentagon can't track, it went to black ops. It went to the kind of programs that are not on the books. And that is ran directly by the NCTC. Well, and how can we get Rasmussen. rid of this guy? How it doesn't matter who him? you put there. They'll well, why do we have to have this position? Oh, oh there, it, 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 it is uh, basically, it should be against the American Constitution, the U.S. Constitution, because it creates a force of corporate intelligence yes. that is more powerful than our military. And more powerful than the government of we the people. And more powerful than the executive, the legislative, and the judicial branch. They work in complete secret. For instance... Oh, well, I want to know how to get rid of them, Thomas. First off, Trump would have to review every single presidential directive and executive order that was not put on the National Registry and see if he, if those presidents, going back all the way to Reagan when this was started, because when Reagan was president, uh, Bush Sr. actually as vice president came to power and was in control of counterintelligence, counterintelligence through the CIA when it was still part of the CIA, and then it broke off. And then there became a rogue version of this. And then the rogue version of it had to have an in-house homeland security version of it to counteract the rogue version of it. So there's counterintelligence and counterterrorism going on by ex-CIA and corporate intelligence up the kazoo. They have 2,000 separate companies that they run, and they are literally, if you put all those together, uh, second only to the United States of America as a power in the world. And so the CIA runs a black ops uh, budget that is beyond imagination, and, and the way that they fund that is be explained best by uh, Catherine Austin Fitz. So if you haven't listened to her in her last few broadcasts, uh, she really explains this in great detail in the way that they steal the money. I can explain it too. It's complicated, but it's a, a type of money laundering. And don't forget, in the uh, one of these um, shows called House of Cards, they show the way the president really works and the way the White House really works. And they show that the money that gets the president elected comes through casinos. It is laundered money coming through casinos from foreign interests that are not allowed to invest or basically control. I was going to call it invest, but to donate, to control our 
presidential elections and all of our elections. So everybody, and I say this again and again, if we simply investigated everyone in the Congress, and if they have an offshore account, put them in jail for tax evasion, then you would find of the 335 positions you'd, you'd need to fill about three, five, excuse me, 535 positions, you would need to fill about 530 of them. Because that's what's going on, folks. People are being paid with money in offshore accounts from foreign governments. This is, can be shown again and again. We put this in our videos. Uh, look at Hunter Biden in Ukraine. Look at Joe Biden receiving money from Ukraine. Look at John McCain receiving money from Russia. Look at John McCain receiving money from Ukraine. On and on and on. The Mandalay Bay is nothing more. And that's the reason that Sheldon Adelson tried to force himself, even in public, even against Trump's will, to give him money for his election so he could buy Trump. And Trump would not, would not be bought. And the only money that he took from him was legal money. And I do not know that Trump ever used a super PAC. I don't think he did. So it would have had to be completely, completely legal money, not using super PACs, which should be illegal. You know, when we first started looking at Mandalay Bay, we were looking at uh, this being a possible false flag for a gun grab with this UN Small Arms Treaty. Remember, we had talked about that. And, and that's why I was saying that there could be multiple false flags going on here. But um, No, you're absolutely right. But wait a minute. I'm just going to go way out there. I'm going to tell folks, I know sometimes Betsy gets a little crazy, but um, that's what usually gets <laughs> go your mind it, going. Bets. And so I said, look, you know, and they failed. They Because Americans were so awake to false flags, thanks to all the education that we've been doing since San Bernardino. And we wrote the piece called uh, False Flags or Legal Propaganda, which is really good because people are now very educated in what to watch for false flags. So let's just say that this was a ploy to get Americans to give up their guns to satisfy the small arms treaty. And it failed because, bam, we were right on it. You guys were great. The videos, the articles, everything, they're still coming in. So they had no choice. They had to throw Harvey Weinstein under the bus to distract us. So he would go after the NRA to maybe shut us down that way. And so I know I, it was crazy as I threw it out, but this Weinstein thing seems to be somehow connected. It's 100% connected, Betsy. 100% connected. Um, uh, MGM also makes movies. They're Hollywood. MGM Resorts International is Hollywood. Hollywood. Don't forget that. Yeah. Not only that, but he went after the NRA, and the second that he did, he was shut down completely. Who did he get shut down by? Not only that, we said that in the end, what is the the bottom line with the Mandalay Bay incident, and that is a gun grab, the small arms treaty. Let's remember that on the Congress floor are two uh, uh, bills for going back to the Second Amendment the way that it was written, that you can carry a gun from state to state, that you can't, can, you're not limited, that you don't have to register, and you don't, there's no limit to the amount, you know, back to the way that it was written so that we can defend our country. Do they want, here's what I think was going on, okay, so there's two bills on the floor. At the same time that the, the last time there was a bill on the floor with Obama, what happened? San Bernardino. That's right. And then he the day before. Oh, yeah, right. But here's the thing. And then, of course, Americans, we were waking up and they couldn't get the guns from us. So remember, he came out and he started crying about it. Obama, remember his big crocodile tears? And he had worked from Sandy Hook That's because on. his handlers are saying, we told you to get the guns away from these people. He, Obama signed the UN Small Arms Treaty. And at the point that I investigated last, there was 17 countries signed. 14 countries had their weapons taken from them. Now, here's what I believe is probably happening, and a number, if not the majority, of the uh, conclave agree with this. What was really happening is that two bills on the floor, they had to do what? They had to knock those bills out of the park, and they had to now get a Democratic bill that says, you know, limit guns, limit guns. Because remember, Obama wrote 17 illegal presidential executive orders trying to make states obey federal laws concerning guns. They were all illegal. The court did not stand for any of them. None of them were put into place. Then there was Sandy Hook. And then all you have to do is say Sandy Hook and people cry. 
but we also know that was a false flag. We There are no death certificates. There were no uh, obituaries. Not obituaries. There were no um, coroner's reports. There were no death certificates. The same thing in San no Bernardino, and the same things is going to be in Vegas. Uh, in Vegas, no, so no. far they're on this, and the people investigating. No. There are no. Oh, there are no uh, filings. There are no burials. Nothing. There are no, no death certificates. No. There are no, no coroner reports on any of the people that the New York Times posted the next day. Within 24 hours, they posted a whole slew of people. Though most of them were actors fake people, or they died by moving. This is the same thing that happened with Sandy Hook. Most of those people moved there right before the event, and then they moved afterwards. So they die by moving. You simply but, move, you change but, your name, or don't even change your name. It doesn't matter. Okay. We can't educate everybody about false flags in this one. Thomas, let's go back to um, the stream with Harvey, the uh, small arms treaty. Oh, sorry. And, yes, because there was a, something else I told you. I said, when this uh, Weinstein thing came out, I said, look, it's distracting us about what's really getting ready to unfold. And this is the pedophilia. And we, we saw on the headline today, on Truth News Headlines, where uh, it looks like Trump is really closing in on politicians and the elites on this pedophilia ring. Well, Trump is in a, in a, he's in a death row. He's in a death battle. And they, uh, they have their hands around his throat, but he's a tough fighter. And so we have complete confidence he's going to... Uh, take them on one at a time in public with everybody hearing everything and that let the public decide and that's what's really going on now let's go back Harvey Weinstein represents the furthest left that you can get that is basically when you become rich you become powerful and you then can uh, abuse anybody you want in any way that you want okay that's the far left now the, what's happening with the gun grab that's also the far left now, the gun grab almost happened during Obama's time. And as you know, all of Hollywood came out. Every single star came out in support of taking away guns. You know, nobody wants to stand up for guns except a few of them. A few, uh, you know, Todd Rund, uh not Todd Rundgren, but uh, uh, there's a guy in Michigan. There's a few people who say, you know, Ted, Ted Nugent, don't, you can't take my gun. Very few, but Hollywood is completely for taking your guns. Now, here's what I almost finished my sentence a minute ago. Here's what I suggest is going to happen. There will not be the two bills put forth by Republicans on the in the Congress and in the Senate. There will be one bill put forth by the Democrats, and it will be that all long guns, because they started this name long gun uh, during Sandy Hook, and they even had the wrong type of long gun that uh, that the killer uh, I forget his name. Uh, used uh, as a matter of fact the very weapon that he used isn't the weapon isn't the type of bullets the coroner has in his report so on and so forth they want all long guns okay they already had the UN strong city forces in so they already have all of the UN equipment in uh, this is real equipment this isn't national guard equipment folks this is real just used UN equipment that is all over the world it's sent into America now after they got the guns from 14 other countries they sent in literally all of the ground machinery, including tanks, including armored machinery, including Humvees that have the, the, uh, the uh, radio uh, dishes on them that can literally send out vibrations that can cause you to pass out or die or feel that your brain is on fire. They've demonstrated these again and again. They are in every city in America. This was what Obama was doing to set up for Hillary. And so the Strong Arms, uh, Strong Cities Initiative, he signed that too, but it isn't legal. The UN Small Arms Treaty, he signed that too. Uh, all, uh, all of the treaties he signed, none of them are legal. But if we can get a bill that says we're going to collect all long, right, long guns, that would disarm America and cause... The United Nations to be able to take over America as simply as they took, uh, as we have seen Ukraine taken over, Russia, USSR, uh, uh, Venezuela, uh, Syria, uh, uh, Libya, Sudan. Don't get me started. But the UN is always involved in making sure there's peace after the terrorists come in and bomb and, and rip off the company, a country, and have economic terrorism and set up a central bank. Then the UN will leave.
But until then, the UN is there as a peacekeeping force to make sure that the military-industrial complex, which is not just in America, it is transnational, it's international, it is a globalist, corporate number of beings. Each corporation is a being. Don't forget that. That's the key here. Every corporation is a being, and we cannot what? even create sure laws against these corporations. Thomas, I just want people to hear the word you're saying. Being. B-E-I-N-G. Yes. Let that sink in to you. What kind of being is this? A corporation is a being, like a human being, that has rights. And if you take money from that corporation because you no longer want to do business with you, TPP said they could sue the country. Yes. Every corporation, in other words, instead of us suing Apple, and the reason TPP had to pass, and 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 you were basically given $10,000 if you went into the basement of the Congress and signed it, though it was so big you couldn't read it and you couldn't take it out of that room, so no one read it, but they signed it, and when they signed it, they got $10,000 for their next campaign. That's what TPP was. And what did TPP said? It said, Apple cannot be sued. As a matter of fact, Apple can sue country, countries. That Microsoft can't be sued. They're a corporation, they're a human being. They have feelings that can be hurt. And not only that, they can create super PACs and they can create Eric they're, Schmidt okay. from Google giving infinite but money but to Hillary Clinton without anybody being able to control this. This they're is corporate. corporate beings, not human beings. They they are evil, imperialistic right. beings. I agree that, but don't call them human beings because we're going to have listeners that are going to go wild. The that. United States Supreme are. Court says that corporations are this, have the same rights as every citizen of the United States Fine. of America, That's different even than if they don't beings. pay taxes, even if they are, of course, aren't a human being, or even if they aren't a citizen, it doesn't matter. But now what has happened? Trump has reversed it, and Apple's being sued. Google's being sued. Amazon's being sued. It's the opposite of TPP. And we need to break them up, too. We've got to break them up, especially Amazon. It's just eating up all the retail. Did you hear, see, even they're going after UPS and FedEx trucking, banking, everything. Thomas, last word, wrap it up. Well, there can't be a last word on this, Betsy, because what happened at Mandela Bay was the end of corrupt political funding. The end of George Soros being able to give $6 billion to the Democratic National Committee. That's why they don't want to give up their server, because we know how much he gave. It's completely illegal, and he controlled John Podesta. He controlled Hillary Clinton. He controlled Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Donna Brazil. They were controlled by one man, George Soros. It's illegal. Now, on the other hand, sorry to have to say it, where does the Republican money come from? Yeah, you guessed it. Las Vegas resorts. Why? Because that's where all the money laundering has always gone on. That's where the mafia, that's where the, 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 that's where the gangsters, that's where everyone has always laundered their money. Everyone knows it's legal to launder money in Las Vegas. Prostitution is legal there. It's Sin City. What goes on there stays there. You can't go into any resort in Las Vegas that is not a fortified country unto itself with so much security that there is no such thing as being able to bring weapons into a casino. If you think they don't have metal detectors already, you're wrong. But now Chertoff is going to sell and already has started using in some of these resorts in Las Vegas. Yes, that's right. The same Homeland Security, what do you call it, TSA body scanners that he uses in airports that are proven to be 99% ineffective, hey, but he puts the money in his own bank account. But you know what account. Las Vegas is going to find out is that the people, American people, we're so awake now, we'll just stop going to Vegas. So, folks, if you're out there and you see a hotel that's got a scanner on it, then don't go to it. Why would you gamble anyway? That's like going to the <laughs> stock market. That's right. Gambling is... You always okay. lose. The house always wins. Now, what I'm about to say is what I always say. The Trump effect worked. He got elected. He's going to be reelected. And all the scumbags, like the ones like Corker and like Haslam 
and like uh, the all the other Republican scumbags Mitchell and are all Schumer going to have to leave. And Feinstein at eighty four years old that wants to run again? Are you kidding me? Because Honey, go home, pack. get in your recliner, and take a break. They okay. couldn't attack him because he used his own money. Yes. Okay. This is why the Trump effect is so profound because it's not fake. He's not a lie. He is exactly who he is, and he didn't take money from Adelson. He didn't take money from the corrupt people. He was offered all that money, and he now has broken the bank of fraudulent election money for the Republicans and for the Democrats. The Democrats overstepped themselves with the DNC, and now everyone notices when George Soros groups step up to the plate like Antifa and Black Lives Matter and the ACLU and the, uh, uh, the, the Southern, Southern Poverty, Poverty Law Center. <laughs> and all the people who are also supported by who? Yes, that's correct. Adelson and his MGM Resort International supports those very groups we just mentioned with that money. Why? Because they want chaos, folks. They simply want chaos. They're willing to create chaos so that they can get stock market returns. We already see that. They're willing to perhaps kill people simply because, why? Uh, they need more money because the petrodollar is crashing. And, be, and they need to now uh, turn the attention on someone else like uh, the pedophiles in Hollywood who are so well known. How many videos have we seen of top actors and actresses saying that they literally had to participate in satanic rituals involving pedophilia and death to get to the positions that they're in? These people who were offered $20 million a movie, do you, do you think that is uh, that, uh, that's just simple to do? Why do you think Jim Carrey went crazy? He was making $20 million a year, now he's turned on Hollywood. Why do you think... Angelina Jolie came out with those movies she came out saying that she had to participate in those things. Brad Pitt came out and said, yes, it's true. Uh, how many people have to come out to point out that Harvey Weinstein is just the tip of the iceberg?